Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So I got the top up. I'll show you my switch. So the switch is in. I ended up doing it a little bit differently. I made a harness. Uh, I got a pack of the original style uh, Packard connectors or Series 56 connectors, they call them. They're used on the 60s cars. Uh, this was a three pin one. It's not the original harness, but I figured it's the closest thing I'm gonna get. And then I wired the switch with ring terminals. It looks pretty nice, it works. I've got the motor hooked up, filled it. So you fill it, you take the plug out, you fill it while it's horizontal. You don't wanna turn it on end and fill it. Uh, so you fill it up to the bottom of the plug hole, hook up the connections to the cylinders. There's one there. There's one on the other side. They're two-way cylinders. So, you know, you pump it one way, it pushes the cylinder up. You pump it the other way, it pushes it down. And uh, you start with them down. And without hooking them up, you run them. Uh, you run them up. And then you got to keep filling the reservoir because this doesn't hold a lot. And you got all these tubes to fill. You've got two of these cylinders to fill. So I took at least a quart of transmission fluid. It might've taken a little more. I kind of lost track, but uh, you keep raising them, fill, raise them, fill. You'll hear it start to run out of water or uh, run out of uh, fluid. Uh, so I used a, this is a big like animal syringe. And my brake bleeding kit happened to have a nice little rubber 90 degree elbow that fit right over this. So I was just able to draw up the fluid and then I could get it right into the fill hole. And I just kept doing that. And you get it, you get the cylinders raised up to the top and then you go the other way. And it's gonna push the fluid out of the cylinder back into the reservoir and then through the top. And you keep doing that. You go up and down, up and down, and you keep checking the level in there. Once you make one cycle, you don't have to fill it as much. And you work it till the air come, all the air is out. So you leave the fill plug off, you go up and down full cycles, let it push all the air out, let all the uh, lines fill with fluid, uh, give the motor a rest. They don't want you running the motor longer than 20 or 30 seconds at a time. So you go up and you come back down and let it sit. Even though it's not under load, I didn't want to risk burning it out, uh, but it worked great. And you can see in here, my light. Yeah, there it is. It just has rubber grommets that sit in the holes. They don't quite line up. Um, the one that was in there, they didn't quite line up either. You're supposed to like push them in. I haven't pushed them in all the way yet, but uh, I'll get there, I guess. But top is up. It was extremely stiff. All the joints were very uh, rusty and dry. So I sprayed fluid in there. Um, uh, uh, penetrating oil, I mean. And just worked them loose gradually, carefully by hand, helping the motor. I didn't want to burn out my new convertible motor. But it's, it's coming around. And I can only, the top is all crusty and hard. I can only get it so so far i don't want to risk damaging it but i'm just going to keep loosening it up but you know as you can see it's it's up it's making progress i gotta vacuum all this and get the floor cleaned up put down some new sound deadening material we got got plenty of work ahead of us but it's moving along all right good night everyone